welcome everyone. Uh, today we are at Tony Brook University having a very special interview with a very special guest today. Today we are interviewing uh, Professor Abe Gishpande, um, distinguished professor at Stony Brook University. Abe is a State University of New York distinguished professor in the Department of Physics and Astronomy at Stony Brook. He also serves as a Director of Science for the Electron Ion Collider at Brookhaven National Laboratory. In addition, he is the founder and director for the Center for Frontiers in Nuclear Science. Abi, hi, yeah. and thanks for being around once more. We would like to ask you about the Center and, you know, what's your mission yeah. in the uh, Center? So, uh, this Center was set up uh, in 2017, 2018, jointly between Stony Brook University and Brookhaven National Lab with a generous grant a support from the Simons Foundation. The aim and the vision I had in mind for the center was to support young scientists, particularly uh, at the postdoctoral level, to, to explore the science of the electron ion collider, to encourage them to focus on the science of electron ion collider. Because at that time, there was no funding available from the DOE or NSF to go in this direction. But we certainly need young people to get ready to lead the future of physics at the EIC. So that was the vision. That simple part was that to make this center an attractive place for young people to come in and become a center for intellectual dis the discussion for everything that relates to electron ion collider. So those were the two things that we aimed at. And as a result of those aims, the means that we employed was that we just would employ uh, our postdocs. We never, the senior people in the group who were supporting it, never took any salaries. It was just voluntary. Uh, people uh, would come here for workshops uh, related. There should be a proposal driven pr uh, process. And that's what we, that's what we have implemented. We have now started a summer school that brings in 30, 40 students from all over the world um, and they get trained in the, introduced to the science of EIC through other experts in the field from around the world. Um, there I wanted to particularly emphasize the borderless nature because most of the other fundings have some restrictions on who they can or cannot support. Whereas we do not ask that question. If you get qualified to come to the school, no matter which country you come from, we will support you here as you as you come in. So those were the kind of things I wanted to do and have lectures, have people come in, visit, talk about EIC together, write papers together, you know, come here for just that kind of a, a visit. And all that has been made possible by the center. And I'm very, very delighted to also know that most of our, 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 our postdocs are now either tenure track or tenured faculty around the world, which means that the center has created future droplets or seeds for physics of the electron ion collider and funding, of course, from their respective funding agencies. That's very interesting, actually. Like, oh, as you said, like helping the coming generations, postdoc is a seat for the tenure track professors yeah. and to the leading the field right. of the electron ion collider. And so if we said on average, how many postdocs you have? So typically we have about three to four people who are fully funded by the center here at Stony Brook or at Brookhaven. And then we have about 10 or so, which are joint postdoc positions with, with remote institutions where the center pays 50% of their salaries and the university or other national lab pays the remaining 50%. And the expectation is that those people will communicate very regularly with us at the center mm -hmm. and spread the word of the EIC. And they will do the half of their work on EIC related activity and half on something that is more current so that they are ready for the immediate next job. But they start incubating. We start incubating them for a longer term career. When EIC turns on, they should be ready to take leadership. That's, really That's the idea. Yeah. Yeah. And also, you, you guys have workshops, as you said, over here. Yes. So, I've, myself, I'm aware of at least more than five yeah. workshops this year, yeah. last year. 
Right. So about how many in average in different fields? So typically about eight to 10 workshops per year. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's almost like uh, that's every fine. alternate month or even sometimes, sometimes mm -hmm. even every month we have a workshop here. Uh, typically two, three days people come in and have a very nice discourse on any topic that they select. Uh, again, it is community driven. People mm -hmm. propose and we just look at the evaluations of the of the external committees and we made make it possible for them to come. That's very important. I will say the, the center is shaping the future of nuclear right. particle right. physics. Well, I'd like to say and that. I'd like to <laughs> hope that that is correct. It. Yes. And yeah, I would like to thank you once more for the information about the center. And I would like everybody to look on the center web page. It will be in the description of this video. Yeah. And encouraging the current students, postdoc, and even faculty to look at the center and see yes. if we can participate and help. Yeah. Of Thank course. you, Abe. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much.